one show that dominates cable news, The O'Reilly Factor. Next day with us on Bill O'Reilly and Personal Story segment tonight. Some Americans, including the editorial writers at Investors Business Daily, are angry that a few American Muslims are asking for special stuff. At the airport in Kansas City, special foot washing showers have been installed. Authorities say no public funds were used. In New York City, an Arabic school, the Kahil Gabran International Academy, is planned. Anyone can attend, but come on, it's obvious what that is. And in Minnesota, the Minneapolis Community and Technical College, St. Cloud State, and the University of Minnesota Duluth either have or are considering foot baths for Muslim students on campus. And by the way, the community college mentioned banned a food card guy from playing Christmas music in the dorms. Joining us now from Washington, Ibrahim Ramey, Director of Human Rights for the Muslim American Society Freedom Foundation. And from Los Angeles, Edina Lekovich, the Communications Director for the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Edina, we'll begin with you. Um, the Kansas City thing is the biggest deal because a lot of cab drivers in that area who are Muslim and they want to pray and you have to wash your feet and, um, and now they said, look, well, you know, we want this facility in the airport. Is that, is that okay with you or is it wrong? It's certainly okay. What we're talking about are faucets here. They don't place an undue burden. They don't, uh, they don't create an unreasonable expectation. And I think the opportunity for accommodation here is one that is, uh, that is, that is simple and straightforward. It is certainly by no means a requirement, but um, the ability of uh, the public facility to offer um, the additional faucets is, uh, is, is a courtesy. And All right, it, it, it is a courtesy, but then uh, it opens the door to other religions saying, well, I would like this courtesy. Uh, I'd like to have of a course, holy we water. Have a I'd like to have a we have a great font. tradition as a country as, of being accommodating and courteous when it doesn't place an undue burden on other communities. Okay, or other but then individuals. you're getting into the public space of being used for religious purposes, and that's the separation of church and state. They trot out every two minutes. So if I say, look, okay, the Muslim foot baths in Kansas City, I have no problem with it, but I'd like a holy water font because I want to bless myself in my prayer ritual, and I'm sure Jewish people would want maybe something that they. Uh, would find comforting in the airport, and then the right, Buddhists, we also, and then the Buddhists would want what they find comforting. You see, where where does it end? I, I see what you're saying, Bill, but but the reality is that in airports across this country, we have chapels that accommodate the religious um, the religious needs of a lot of different religious yeah, groups. Yeah, they're interdenominational no chapels. Exactly, and, and that by no means infringes on upon anyone, and it's simply a matter of making those those facilities available. Okay. And this situation is another uh, example of making facilities available. Mr. Ramey, what about the Cahill? Gabron International School, funded by the New York City public school system. Now, this is obvious a school uh, aimed at um, the Arabic culture, Muslims, and is that okay with you? Well, let's look at it objectively. First of all, not every person who is uh, an Arab is a Muslim, but there are uh, perhaps tens of thousands of people in the New York area that are Arabic speaking, and like any other dual language school, the school is created to accommodate the needs of students and needs of families who speak of another language. And the last I heard, there was no crime involved in speaking the Arabic language anywhere in the United States. So I don't think it's a special accommodation. I think that other dual language schools exist and will exist. Um, and I think it's simply a, a recognition of the demographics of that particular So you community. don't think it's a special accommodation for the New York City public school system to build a school that is basically for Arabic people? Any more so than it would be a special accommodation to build a school uh, for people who speak another language no, other than English. but I don't English, know of any other Arabic. ethnicity in this city that has a school. Well, you know, the New York City public school system, which I did work for for about two years, has, has more than 80 languages, perhaps as many as 100 languages. That's okay. I don't spoken. mind a language deal, but I don't know any school in the New York City or anyplace else in America that is there for a specific ethnic group. It well, it's, th it's there as, it's there, let me just finish, it's there as a dual language school to accommodate students and families who speak the but Arabic there isn't, language. There isn't there's any nothing other one. wrong with that. But there's nothing, there's no Russian, there's, no, there's nothing, you know, all right. Okay. Um, let's get on to the uh, colleges. Now, the colleges, this Minnesota mm -hmm. college, particularly very active. They, uh, some Muslim students want their own dorms. They, again, the foot showers every place they want them. Uh, this and the other thing. Again, publicly funded money. Uh, Adina going into these schools. Um, p all people of all religions funding them. And they're the Muslims saying, look, we want our own dorms. We want more uh, foot baths, prayer rugs. Uh, we want, you know, whatever we want. And it's all based on religion. And again, the separation of church and state issue comes up, does it not? 
It, it, it all depends on your view. Now look, what happens on college campuses across this country, and we all, we've all had experiences in these areas. I went to UCLA for my undergrad, and that, that's a public university, and there were floors of dorms that were dedicated to certain types of, uh, certain types of students. You had, um, and those were self-selecting, um, volunteering students who chose to live in, in, on those floors of those dorms that were either African American or that were, the, that had, yeah, but that's, you know, that's that had different, different thing affiliations. You can choose your no, roommate. Is, this, is, this is a structural thing. That they well, want no, it's built. certainly the same thing because what we're no, if there is a special need to build something, then we're then we're potentially you know getting into new territory. Obviously, we shouldn't. The, the, the standard here, there's not a one size fits all solution. The standard here is going to be um, situational, where the the religious freedoms of one group should not infringe upon um, the rights no, of there, any there, other group. It seems group. to me that some Muslims want special status, Mr. Ramey. They well, it want, certainly doesn't they, seem it's to a religious that way. based thing. They want to be able to pray in the middle of wherever they want with the rugs and this and the other thing and it's a public facility. I'll give you the last word, sir. Public facilities and private needs are not necessarily in contradiction and when there's a collision between the right of one group or the preference of one group and the right of a larger community to determine the use of space, then the ideal way to approach it from our perspective is the, the approach of negotiation and logical conversation and not polemics and not hatred directed against one group. Okay. Thank you very much. Very interesting discussion. We appreciate it. Directly ahead, lots of body language action.